Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens of Motorsports on today's episode of Making the 36 Worse Than It Is Now. We're gonna be removing the power steering unit. Now the power steering in our car does work, but there's a couple reasons why you'd wanna get rid of it. The main reason I think is because if it's broken, buying something like this is a stopgap until you have the money to fix it. One of these costs about $25. This is made by Condor Speed Shop. I'll have the link to this in the description below. And today we're actually gonna be removing the entire power steering unit and bypassing it completely. So in order to do that, we have this guy right here. What this does is it allows oil to flow from one side of the rack to the other side. What happens is the rack has oil in it and it still needs to be an oiled rack. So if you are actually gonna be doing this, you can change the fluid and service the steering rack separate than the power steering. What this allows to have happen is oil from one side of the rack flow to the other side of the rack by using the original banjo bolts that are sitting in there now. This has channels flowing between these two holes here, which allow the oil move from one side to the other. If you don't do this and you just put those banjo bolts back in, what'll happen is when you're turning the car, you can actually compress the fluid that's in there and blow out the seals, and it would make it more difficult to drive the car. So in our case, we're doing this because it is a relatively cheap option to do. A new serpentine belt is anywhere between $20 to $25, and this is around $25. So we're gonna be in this project about 50 bucks, and it will save us from having any future power steering issues. So if it were to break in the future, we don't have to worry about it at all because it doesn't exist. It will give us more room, we'll lose a little bit of weight, and then we should have a little bit of parasitic loss taken off the vehicle. So eventually when we go to dyno the car, because we're gonna do that, even though we didn't get a baseline number I have been online and seen a lot of these cars do around 160 horsepower. I'm guessing that we will see a little bit more than that because we are doing some things with the car, including a tune when we get the ECU sent out that will help the car uh, gain a little bit of horsepower. And based on how it felt when we were driving it originally, it did feel very strong. So I'm assuming it's gonna dyno a little bit more than what it did from the factory. David's actually guessing that everything that we're doing now, including the tune, is gonna get it back up to where it should have been in the first place. So we'll all see that in a future video because I do want to dyno this car and compare it to uh, other people's numbers that we're seeing online. But today we're gonna be removing the power steering, putting this on and bypassing the power steering unit altogether. Now I've never done this before, so bear with me as we go through and learn to do this together, but I've always wondered why the 36 has its reservoir down in there. On the other one, I think somebody had relocated it up here to like where the E46 sits. Now I know that there's an intake right here for the alternator, but it is just kind of silly that it's all the way back down in there. So if you want to get at your power steering, you have to take all this off anyways to get back down in there. But like we said, that will be completely gone once we get rid of this and we won't have to worry about it at all. No maintenance, it'll all just be gone. All right, well, this belt looks like it's gonna fit right. Uh, there's plenty of space in between the tensioner and where it passes where the pump used to sit. So this is where the pulley used to go. It used to go uh, from here around that and then up to the alternator. And the, here's the tensioner here and there's plenty of room in between the tensioner and the alternator. Sorry if this is kind of hard to see. It's, I don't have a lot of space to get down in there and show everybody what's going on. But this is the right belt size. And now I'll show everybody the belt because I didn't want to say it before, before it didn't work. So looks like it's a 1410. I'm guessing that a 1400 would probably fit as well, but the 1410 looks like it's gonna work for our applications, and I'm excited to get the rest of this project done. So here we are underneath the car. Here's our power steering unit. You can see it's leaking there, but we'll get rid of all that. So I wanna drain all the fluid out of there, and then the reservoir is just at back behind there. You can just barely see it right there. And then we'll also be able to get rid of these lines that run zigzag right here. And it's kinda of weird that the cooler sits here, because the E46, the cooler actually comes out front and around in front of the radiator and goes out and then back and then back over here. It is nicer to have it right here because it's not in the way. I remember ruining my power steering cooler because it was out in the front and I was working on the radiator and I ended up breaking it.
All right, so obviously when you're doing your power stirring, you don't want to cut them up like this unless you have to. I was just being lazy and didn't want to get my hands super dirty. Even though I'm wearing gloves, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So I cut the lines, let them drain out. This power steering fluid that's in the car is absolutely horrid. I've never seen anything this dark before and it smells terrible. So I'm glad that we're getting rid of this fluid. Even if we kept the power steering, this would have had to have been done where we were draining every last drop or flushing it out because like I said, this is, this is terrible fluid. So we're gonna get rid of all of this. And uh, actually right now, I think I can get the reservoir out that's just up here because these two lines are the ones that it's going to. So I'm gonna go up there, unbolt the reservoir, get that out of the way. And then I believe the two hard lines with the banjo bolts are just up over here on the other side of this boot. And then the power string is right here. We'll get rid of that and then we'll be good to go. All right, so I've just spent the last five minutes trying to put the camera in a position where everybody could see what I'm doing. But if you look right in here, there are two bolts. Those are the two banjo bolts that sit right next to each other. And I'll be removing those. And that will allow me to remove this line here. And it will allow me to remove the rest of the cooler here. And then once those two are out, we'll be pulling out our power steering delete kit by Condor Speed. And I'll be able to get some better shots up in there once we get this all finished up. But basically all I'm doing is taking out these two bolts here, and then we'll be putting those same bolts back in but using the new crush washers that come with the kit. All right, so I've been over the instructions here just to make sure I'm doing everything right. So it says to remove everything, all of the original banjo bolts, and it says to keep all four washers, but it's kind of interesting. So I've got the old washers over here, but these are crush washers, so you're not really supposed to reuse them. And then in the instructions later on, it doesn't say to reuse them. So I'm not sure why it says to keep both banjos and uh, the all four of the washers. I'm wondering if they mean these washers here, but since they came in the kit, I would assume that was a given to keep that. But the, the rest of these instructions says to basically turn your string rack uh, one side to the other and that will drain fluid out of it. Now the fluid in the rack, like we talked about earlier, it was is really, really dirty. And so I'm trying to figure out a way if there, if I can drain it. And I guess there's not a drain bolt on this car. And I guess that's kind of a thing with a lot of vehicles. There's no drain bolt on the power steering rack, which is really kind of stupid. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to get some new clean fluid in there before we uh, put all this back together. All right, so here's what I decided to do. And it's a good thing I kept the old washers because I don't want to use the new ones for this, even though I'm not going to be tightening this down all the way. And even when I do put this together, I don't think it's going to crush these at 15 foot pounds. But I'm going to be using the old washers and I'm going to put this all back together like this. I'm going to put new fluid in there and then I'm going to run the rack back and forth and then pull this off and then do the rack back and forth again. And then hopefully it'll spit out a bunch of mixed fluid. And then I'm just going to do that over and over again and just get a bunch of new fluid in there. Cause like I said, it is really, really bad. And then when I am ready to actually put this together properly, I'll turn the camera back on and show everybody that. So here's the final product. Now I did get a torque wrench to get this to 15 pounds and the bottom one, this bigger one here, just never got there. And then the, the sides of the 
actual delete plate here started to get kind of squished out a little bit. So I'm not sure what's going on and it just, it never got super tight. So I stopped, they're not gonna come out or anything like that. But like I said, I knew I wasn't gonna crush the washers doing this, but it did kind of start to squish right here. And like I said, I used a torque wrench and I never got anywhere near that 15 pound feet. Well, there you have it, the Condor Speed Shop Power Steering Delete for the E36. Now the same kit, I believe, is for the 46, the Z3, the Z4. Don't quote me on that. Make sure that you're getting the right one for your car. But I'm assuming all the ones that have this similar styled power steering rack is gonna have essentially the same setup as this one. And it really didn't take me that long, even though the, there's a bit of a time jump, it looks pretty dark outside compared to when we started recording between projects on this car and on this one for other videos and getting pictures for the thumbnails and stuff like that that I was doing and eating dinner. This really only took me about 40 minutes and I was cleaning off dirt and mounting up that new serpentine belt to bypass the power steering pump. So somebody who knows this project and has done it a couple of times could probably get this done in about 20 minutes or so. It was really simple to do. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. The car no longer has power steering, so hopefully that will save us a little bit of power on the engine side so we're losing that parasitic loss. And then like I mentioned earlier, we did lose a little bit of weight out of the front. So again, I'm very happy with this. It went very smooth. There is a lot of E36 content coming up. As you can tell, we are far from being done with the car and uh, there is just so many things to do. We've got a huge list of stuff, including taking it to the dyno, maybe doing a weld to diff in the rear. So there's lots of projects coming up. So stay tuned for those. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Thanks to all my new Patreons. If you wanna become a Patreon, my link is in the description below and we'll see everybody in the next video.